This video is one of ten videos in this class and it's important that you look at all of them and make your notes and do your research into each of the areas here. We're dealing with uh, the selection process, the selection of candidates for a particular job. And in this particular video we're going to look at testing. Sometimes employers want to test to see if the applicants are suitable for the tasks that will be required within the, the job. So knowing the job specification and knowing what is on the application form completed by the applicant and or, or alternatively in the CV, the curriculum vitae that's been submitted by the applicant, knowing what's what's required and knowing what is on offer may not give a full picture. So sometimes companies engage in supplementary testing these are actual tests conducted by perhaps experts they may be outsourced to other companies or other institutions who can do the tests more professionally and the results of the tests will give the employer greater insight into the candidates and help them to decide which one is most suitable so the first one we'll start with is psychological testing now this can be applied for selection purposes to see if a candidate matches the requirements if they've got the right temperament the right orientation the right psychological perspective if you like of the tasks that are required and if they are suitable for for the job the tests are developed through um, evidence experience and statistical data um, the candidates are compared to the scores of the, the normal population and similar in, intellect groups. So candidates can be tested on a range of areas and then the results of the tests can be compared with the population or some relevant group if, if that data is available. So it's important that some sort of benchmark is in place so when the candidate is tested the results are known as favorable or not favorable but the only way they can judge if it's favorable or not is by comparison with some standard so the ideal standard is to compare the results of the the tests with the the general population what would the general population on average achieve what has this candidate achieved and that will give the employer some insight as to the suitability of the candidate for the job being offered. Sometimes the tests can be online and this is becoming increasingly popular. It's cheap and easy to run and it's efficient and it can be uh, even processed automatically. The server uh, online can contain the relevant software the relevant relevant uh, facilities for for analyzing the the results and pass it on to the employer so more and more the testing can be done online they have to be developed by specialists psychological tests have to be done by qualified people in the area otherwise they can be misleading they can be um, they could actually be dangerous in the context of a person's career development. They can destroy a person's career development if the tests are uh, distorted or badly designed uh, it means that somebody's career may be stopped or uh, jeopardized as a consequence of faulty tests. So it's absolutely important that um, the tests are properly devised by specialists. Now the various types of tests, let's have a look at a few of these. Uh, there are various types that an organization may consider when, when looking at the selection process, the selection of um, candidates for a particular job. You could choose uh, aptitude tests and I'll go through these various tests again in a few moments uh, just to, to expand them. Intelligence tests uh, may be used, trainability, attainment, 
uh, personality. Now we'll go across each of these very quickly just to, uh, to see what what's involved in each of them. But these are the various types of tests that may be conducted uh, on candidates. So when someone applies for a job they may have various tests to complete to assess their suitability in the context of the requirements of the job. So let's uh, let's look through these and we'll start with the the aptitude test. This test assess, uh, assesses whether a candidate has the potential to develop their skills and abilities. So it's it's simply looking at the ability of the candidate to learn and develop the skills that are required by the job. So it's looking at the potential of the, the candidate. It's looking at their aptitude, their ability to pick up the skills and to use the skills efficiently. So it's inquiring into their capacity to learn new skills, their capacity to apply new knowledge. Intelligence tests, well, mental ability test. The test illustrates uh, the candidate's mental ability or capacity uh, to perhaps analyze situations or uh, do simple calculations, but do them fast. Have an agile mind, a mind which uh, can take in information and process the information and come up with logical solutions and answers in a in a timely manner in in a, in a fast uh, in a fast way they're able to process the information quickly and produce results uh it's also quite reliable uh somebody who's got the ability to uh have a fast mind and the ability to calculate fast but they must be able to calculate accurately otherwise uh, it's a pointless exercise but the test may look at vocabulary, the use of words, uh, linking words together, um, analogies. If something is the same, then will something else be the same as something? It, looking at analogies, looking at uh, trying to reason from similar circumstances into the present situation. Looking at simple arithmetic, as I said, numbers, and looking at general knowledge questions, and even logical questions. Uh, various types of questions that can be devised by specialists, by psychologists that can test into a person's intelligence. Intelligence testing uh, is, is well established. The results of the test will determine the candidate's uh, ability to take in new information which is important. Now the types of tests, again, trainability test measures the, uh, the employee's ability to be trained. Uh, it's important that the employee or the candidate for the job in, the, in terms of the selection process, the candidate must have uh, a willingness to be trained, must have uh, a hunger for something new, an interest in being trained in a different area and being involved perhaps in a different area and acquiring a new set of skills. So is the person trainable? Can they actually learn the new skills and apply the new skills? Have they got that capacity? So this one could be uh, employees carrying out practical tests. And if they can undertake the task after training, then they have to develop uh, the, the ability to develop their performance. So it might be a practical uh, test asking uh, the candidates to watch a certain sequence of processes and then reproduce them and then uh, look at or or problem solve uh, they're doing a certain process and the process breaks down what do they, they do next how do they get it going again how do they uh, fix it until it it can be dealt with properly by engineers or whoever how can they keep the the system running so how can they get around problems? Attainment tests. Well, these tests measure the level of acquired skills. What skills has the person got already? Uh, sometimes people have skills and they don't realize it. Sometimes people have capacity to do certain things and they just 
don't recognize it themselves. So this one, this test, can bring out the various skills. Not just the, the broad skills of reading and writing and arithmetic, but logical skills and problem solving skills, team working skills, and negotiation skills. There are many skills that people have acquired and this one will look into the the various skills that people have. Uh, candidates apply for jobs knowing they have the skills needed so it's by and large the candidates will self-select they know that they can do that job that's why they've applied for it but this attainment test will back up that contention it'll give the employers confidence that the people actually have the skills not that they believe they've got the skills but they actually have the skills personality tests um, a test conducted to assess personality and success in the job and organization looking at the personality of the person uh, what sort of people are they? are they quiet and reflective people do they think about the, the situation and come up with solutions are they impulsive do they act quickly and perhaps not think so much just try everything and hopefully one of the solutions will work or what sort of people are they what's their personality like can they work well with others uh, are they more solitary um, are they good at timekeeping how did they see their role in the organization how were they organized so this is the the search for an ideal employee looking at the one that matches best with the requirements of the organization mostly these type of tests are conducted within graduate and management jobs uh, in the uh, on the shop floor the the skills required are to do certain functions and to follow certain routines so it's more straightforward but when more uh, elaborate decisions have to be made and decisions which are atypical perhaps new decisions have to be made then these personality types and the, the various tests that are going to be conducted or could be conducted are very relevant. It is a form of stereotyping if you like it's looking for people of a certain characteristic or a certain set of characteristics uh, it's rejecting people who don't have those characteristics so it is stereotyping it's it is trying to get a, a homogeneous group together or a relatively homogeneous group together people who can work together who have got certain personality traits who see the world essentially from the same perspective uh, the, it is stereotyping of, of a type but testing is important and testing has uh, become very important within the selection process there are many uh, specialist testers and these people are highly qualified, they're psychologists, they are uh, good experience of the, in the recruitment uh, business if you like. They, they have got a lot of experience and they make themselves available for testing purposes and companies are turning to them more and more to try and find the right workers, the right personnel for the right jobs. That's all I'm going to deal with in testing. It's just a, a brief overview looking at the various types of tests that may be conducted and why they're being conducted. But that's all I'm going to deal with here, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.